Assalamu alaikum. We are back again with uh, the special program, Friends of Bangladeshi. I'm going to introduce the guest, very special guest soon. But before that, let's go and see a video clip. Howard Doba is the managing director of Canary Wharf Group. Canary Wharf has always maintained a close relationship with its local community, especially with the Bengali community in Tar Hamlets. Howard Doba visited Bangladesh for football academy and various charity work. He supports many projects for young people here in London and in Bangladesh. He was also a judge in Channel's reality show 3G Boss. With his help, 3G Boss was the only television program which was actually shot in Canary Wharf. Welcome back. As I said, today we have a very, very special guest. And he's not just a guest, he's a friend. He's a friend of Bangladeshis in United Kingdom and everyone know him. His name is Howard Dober. He's the boss <laughs> at Canary Wharf. Welcome. Thank you very much. Tell us about Canary Wharf. What is Canary Wharf? Well, Canary Wharf is the property company that owns and has developed uh, the whole of the Canary Wharf estate. So all the buildings at Canary Wharf are owned by Canary Wharf. Okay. Uh, we built them, we uh, manage them, and then people pay us rent. Um, uh, I always say when the banks have a good day, they pay rent. When they have a bad day, they also pay rent. So it's a good business to be in. Um, and of course, we've uh, uh, 120,000 people work at Canary Wharf, of which about 25% are from the surrounding areas. So we need to have a very close working relationship with all of the uh, the local community and local businesses around, around where we are in East London. I have been there a few times. Mm -hmm. You facilitate... Uh on high profile programs on 39th floor. That's right. Uh, and we filmed 3G Boss. 3G um, Boss. There's a show on TV um, which Alan Sugar does. I won't mention the name, but they always pretend that's filmed in Canary Wharf. Okay. Uh, they pretend it's filmed inside the pyramid. It isn't. It's filmed in a studio. Only 3G Boss is really filmed inside Canary Wharf. So Channel S has Good the real access. Yeah. Good to know. I'll come to uh, 3G Boss soon, but tell us more about Canary Wharf what you have been doing and how you engage the community. From the start, Canary Wharf Group, before my time, um, engaged very closely with the local community. Originally the community that had worked in and around the docks, but increasingly with the Bangladeshi community of East London as uh, Tower Hamlets became very uh, uh, very much a centre for the for the Bangladeshi population. And when, when I started at Canary Wharf... Um, How long ago? Which was full-time, I started 13 years ago. 13 so years I worked ago. as a consultant before that. So I've been involved 17 years now, which mm -hmm. uh, has flown by. Um, but 13 years ago, one of my first meetings, they said, you must meet um, our, uh, our community affairs guy, um, Zakir Khan. Zakir. And Zakir, who, who uh, I'm Zakir's boss, which is uh, which is hard work because he's you know he's a, such a big character, he's so well known dynamic. in the community dynamic. It's hard uh, keeping uh, keeping track of, mm. uh, of Zakir. But um, you know I've been very fortunate because Zakir said you know I wanted to take you out and introduce you to people so you really understand how the local business community, how the how the Bangladeshi community in East London works. So uh, Zakia really was my introduction to the British Bangladeshi community in East London uh, and how we as you know a big business uh, can work with the small businesses and with community groups to make sure everybody gets some of the benefit of the economic opportunity mm -hmm. of East London. Do you promote uh, groups like Bangladeshi groups you know in their um sort of employment? We do, and um, you know, what we've seen is, um, is unique, really, um, that you have people, particularly first-generation immigrants, uh, the mums and dads of, of East London, um, they may have come, if they came from um, Silet, in some cases they haven't finished formal education, they may mm. have left school at 12 or 16, so you, know, you see them and then their children with the support of the parents then going on to university. And that sort of jump doesn't really happen, uh, hasn't happened before, where you have parents who maybe um, never formally finished education and the kids are getting to university, you know, going on to be doctors and lawyers, a massive jump. Um, the parents hugely supportive, but perhaps not with very much experience. Um, and that's where I think um, uh, businesses like ours have a responsibility to provide some of that experience. So, you know, even uh, parents would never even have filled in the forms, uh, perhaps don't even have good enough English to fill in the forms. Mm. Businesses like ours can help, help, you know, provide some mentoring, some work experience, 
uh, some advice, um, and also to fund some of those community groups that give that advice mm -hmm. to help local local young people make that jump and then get the good jobs, jobs. at Canary Wharf or set up a business supporting, uh, supplying Canary Wharf mm -hmm. with something. So, um, you We'll know. come back to Canary Wharf, yeah. but uh, the Canary Wharf people know in Bangladesh. Tell us about it. Yeah, well, um, uh, again, I have to give credit to Zakir because it was his idea, but Zak brought me a, uh, a project a few years ago and he said, I'd really want to inspire young people um, through football. Um, and he had this idea of creating a football academy in Bangladesh, which would be completely on merit. Mm -hmm. So whether you are son of a politician or you're son of a rickshaw driver, mm -hmm. you would still have the same chance to, mm -hmm. to get in. Um, and that we would be searching for the Bangladeshi Beckham, mm -hmm. you know, the next generation of football stars. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he explained it to me and I said, OK, I will take this to the board and I'll get support for the project um, because I could see how this would be inspirational, not just in sport, but for so many other walks of life as well. Because as you start to see uh, British Bangladeshi people like yourself, actually, you've been very successful, the next generation say, oh, you know, maybe I could work in television or maybe mm. I could work in business. Um, or you know, sports. There's a route there, or sports. And sports is a good way of inspiring young people. There's my first visit to Bangladesh. We went... How long we, ago? This was, um, gosh, I think 2006, 2007. Okay. My first visit, we went and we met all of the... Uh, all of the sports clubs, the um, the football clubs and the sports administrators in, in Dhaka and Silet and Chittagong. Um, and we went to see Bangladesh Football Federation. Um, and to be honest, there was a bit of resistance from national level. Mm -hmm. They said, we don't like this. Someone coming from outside to run a program. Uh, you give us the money, we'll run the program. We said, no, 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 no. We run the program ourselves, and then if you want to support it, you can join. You can join in, <laughs> um, and and we basically set them a challenge. We said, look, mm -hmm. we're going to do this completely outside of the normal system, mm -hmm. uh, separate program, and if that is inspirational, then great. Um, and we ran a program uh, for four years. We had six thousand boys, six thousand come from to trials all from all, all around Bangladesh. Bangladesh. Um, from uh, we had one boy come. He, he came to trial with no boots. He'd never played in boots. And we said, well, we have to get you some boots so you can, you can be on a level playing field, literally, with everybody else. So we went and bought him boots uh, so he could try. Um, he's now, that boy, uh, son of a rickshaw driver, is now mm. in the national Bangladeshi team. Tim, the football academy, is it in Silet or? Lots of people make promises and talk about stuff. Um, and do, do not stuff in Bangladesh. And they maybe do a big press conference or they do a big launch and they mm. spend all the money on the PR and then the, the follow through isn't very good. Um, and, uh, you know, partly because it's Canary Wharf that did the Football Academy, you wanted to do it properly. So we did four years and we took those boys through. Um, we had 24 boys through the whole program. So we whittled it down at each stage. Um, we paid for, for food, accommodation, for education. Mm -hmm. And some of these boys were going back into school through our program because they'd left school and were working on the streets. Um, so we paid for everything for them for four years. Um, and at the end, we released them and we encouraged the clubs to take them up and the national team to take them up. That was the first program. Mm -hmm. We're now just coming to the end of our second program, another four years, which has been in Select working with um, the Select Football uh, administrators. I think mm. your your uh, my brother your is brother's involved LMP. as well. So yeah. um, that's been really good, mm. and we've had really good support from the clubs because um, they can see we have a football objective. It's not about PR Nothing for else. us. No. It's not about making money. It's about you know delivering um, inspiration for the next generation. Tell us about the talent hunt in uh, with uh, and the BKSP. Um, we we issued a um, uh, talent hunt. We wanted to talk to local clubs and local areas where uh, the the next generation would come from. We were looking for boys aged 11, mm -hmm. so right at the start of, uh, uh, of, of, uh, of playing football. Um, and 6,000 came through the talent hunt. Um, we managed to get the, uh, the government to, uh, to loan us BKSB, the National Sports Centre, as the centre for the academy. Uh, and we got Kulam Sawa Tipu, the former national coach, to be our head coach. Um, and a brilliant guy. He's the Jimmy Hill of Bangladesh. The, um, our, uh, our secretary there, uh, Mr. Babul, um, who is the, um, uh, who's the coordinator of the Bangladesh Football Academy for us. Um, he is the most humble guy. 
you know, you go in his house and it's not a big house, but every wall is covered in football things. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, he's, he's so how many times sport. so far you've been to Bangladesh? I've been, I think it's six times now. Six times. I'm going again in February, February. my seventh time. Is it uh, just uh, related to Canary Wharf? You went to Bangladesh? No, this is every time I take a new person to Bangladesh as our guest. And we've been with, um, uh, with David Beckham's dad, mm -hmm. um, with, uh, with football coaches from UK. And I've been with politicians. I, I warn them, I say, Bangladesh will get under your skin. You never only go once because it, you'll fall in love with the people and you fall in love with the place. You'll go again. So um, not just the football. I've been uh, on political trips, uh, on, on charity visits, working with charities. Um, and, uh, you know, um, I, I'm hoping that in February, uh, my wife's been with me. Um, I'm hoping in February the whole family will come So out. where do you stay? In Silet or um, Dhaka? Well, I've been, to, uh, I've been to Dhaka, I've been to Silet, I've been to Chittagong. Um, I uh, haven't been to Cox's Bazaar yet, and uh, we want to go and, um, uh, and, and do something to help uh, there and see the situation on the, on the ground. Um, but I'm hoping that my, my daughter, Riley, will come out this time. We will be back soon. Uh, stay with us. Thank you. Welcome back. We have a very special guest today. He's Howard Dover from Canary Wharf on this special program, Friends of Bangladeshi. Howard, we'll talk about 3G Boss uh, afterwards. So yep. tell us about it. Well, 3G Boss was an idea that actually came from, uh, from a young person, uh, from, uh, from somebody who'd had work experience at Canary Wharf. Um, uh, Zahin Ahmed, um, and uh, he wanted to inspire um, people of his age um, uh, to think about getting a job in in uh, mainstream British business in the big towers of Canary Wharf. Um, and uh, he worked that up with Channel S and asked me to be part of it. And the idea was, and the idea is, um, that uh, the next generation of British Bangladeshis, there should be no limit at all. They should dream about, you know, being the the, having my job, being the managing director of Canary Wharf, um, being uh, actually Zakir already associate director of Canary Wharf, um, having you know, the top jobs in the big banks, and um, uh, and there's no reason why not. The talent is there. It's about nurturing uh, and inspiring that talent to take the next step uh, and to get a good education and, and get those top. So uh, when top you had all these young people, mm. what did you think of their talent? It's, um, you had some real characters in the show. Um, we, had, um, uh, we had everything from very cheeky to, you know, um, very studious uh, and uh, uh, people, you know, actually some young people with, who'd had quite a lot of experience of, uh, uh, of life despite only being you know, 16, 17. Um, and I think what you got in that show is uh, a sense of um, hopefully some of the things you need to succeed in business about presenting yourself, working as a team, uh, listening to instructions and following them, uh, being able to spell, very important if you're making a phone card, not to spell things wrong on it, because if you do, no one's going to buy that. Um, and, um, and, and, you know, the fundamentals of how to make money in, uh, uh, in, in business. Um, it was, uh, for me, it was, it was really great to see what the next generation is is like um, this is uh, the idea of the third generation, mm -hmm. 3G um, of of British Bangladeshis. We're on to almost the fourth generation now, um, and um, people succeeding in every walk of life. Mm -hmm. So for me, a really inspirational show, and um, I think we should bring it back. Ten, twelve years ago, you went to Bangladesh for the first time. Yeah, first time, and now, up to now, what changes have you noticed? When I first went to uh, to Dhaka. Um, you could see the infrastructure was very poor. The, the, uh, the, the, there's a lot of begging on the street, um, and um, really not very much that you would say a sort of international level of, of quality. Even the hotels not that great. Um, uh, there's clearly been a huge change, and I think that there's, you know, um, governments that have mm. been since then must take some credit, but also the industry of the Bangladeshi people, because 
everybody works. You know, there is, there is, as you know, there's no safety net. There's no uh, social security safety net in Bangladesh. So if you want to eat, you're going to work. Um, and it is, it is so inspiring um, that uh, people, whether that is, you know, the rickshaw driver, like I mentioned, or the, the, the big industrial businessman, the drive for business, for economic growth, for development to better yourself is so strong. It, it is inspirational. If I could take kids from East London who sometimes say, oh, it's hard for us, and take them and show them what their, their equivalent young people in Bangladesh are doing, I think they'd be shocked. But people with very little are working so hard, maybe going to school after working. They work during the day and they go to school at night. You know, it is so inspirational for and me. And technology-wise? The, the infrastructure, I think public transport still has a long way to go. And we, you know, uh, maybe there are ways in which Britain can help with that. Um, I think there's a railway at the moment being built. Um, there is a chance, Which, yeah. um, uh, which British companies mm. are involved in. Um, the, 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 uh, in terms of uh, IT infrastructure, of course, Bangladesh has jumped ahead of us because it never had landlines. There were never landlines in the same way that everybody had a phone here and then everybody had to convert to mobile. They just jumped straight to mobile. mobile. And if you look at what you know, people are doing, their banking, their healthcare. I think um, it's about 80, 90% yeah, the, of the population. Know, even, even like the guy with the stick, you know, tending to the animals in the, yeah. in the field has got a mobile phone. So Bangladesh has an opportunity there to jump ahead of us uh, because mobile coverage is very high. Um, you know, I think there's uh, there's huge opportunity and also for collaboration between Britain and Bangladesh. Mm. And that's something I want to particularly promote myself, you know, on an ongoing basis. Whatever I do in the future is that that economic engagement is um, and, and it's not one way. It's not about, you know, um, in a sort of post-colonial way, Britain saying, oh, let us teach you how to do things. We can learn from Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. We can learn from the industry Give and, and, take. The, and the and the uh, and the innovation. Um, uh, of the Bangladeshi people. Britain can learn a lot from Bangladesh, I think. You had some connections with Bengal? Well, this was, uh, this was a news to me because I'd been to, to Bangladesh quite mm. a few times and I was telling my grandfather, who sadly has passed away just recently, and I was talking to him about uh, going to Bangladesh. He said, do you mean Bengal? Is that what they call Bengal now? And I said, yes, it's Bengal. And he said, my grandfather, so that's my grandfather's grandfather, he said, he said his grandfather, was from Bengal. And I said, what? Excellent. What? And um, so my great, great grandfather was born in a, in a hill station above Calcutta. So uh, uh, it turns out I'm 116th Bangladeshi, Bangladeshi. Which, was, which was news to me. There's but there good you go. news for us. Um, when you got to know the Bengali community, the Bangladeshi community, and the community you know now, education wise, what changes have you noticed? Well, clearly, clearly the, um, uh, and I think I'm right statistically, the British Bangladeshi community is now the most upwardly mobile in education terms. So for many years, if you looked at the statistics, particularly out of London, actually, mm -hmm. in London is a little bit different, but out of London, if you looked at the educational achievement, the British Bangladeshi community was near the bottom yeah. of the table of all of the different um, uh, ethnic groups uh, in UK below below um, everybody else. Now that's really the changed. Top, it's getting up, top, yeah. and um, I would say that the the strength of the Bangladeshi community, it's very supportive actually of each other. So um, I know because families where the community is everywhere, isn't it? It's everywhere. Yeah, Every, small or big. From you go to Aberdeen or Penzance, there is a Bangladeshi community, but also through. Partly things like Channel S, which is, you know, everybody watches Channel S. Mm -hmm. um, there is an opportunity for people to find out about, you know, Bangladeshi people who are um, or barristers or lawyers, judges. Um, we've got a Bangladeshi uh, Formula 3 racing driver, uh, uh, Hamza Chowdhury. Who's kickboxing. Now the, yeah, we've got the kickboxing world champion. In fact, the only Muslim world champion of any sport is British Bangladeshi, um, who's, you know, a big friend of ours at, at Canary Wharf. Um, Hamza Chowdhury plays for Leicester. Now we've got a Premier League player, um, and these these people are not just inspirational, but I know that there's there's then connections where somebody says, "Oh, your your dad's friend is a lawyer. He can advise mm -hmm. you know the young person on how to go about getting into law." And we, you know, we 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 all of us, either part of the community or friends of the community, need to sure. need do, to inspire. Do you like curry? Uh, well, unfortunately, this is this is. Um, uh, when, uh, when, when this baby is born, it will be a curry baby. Um, 
I, I, I love curry, um, and uh, I've, uh, I've been very privileged to be involved with, uh, uh, with the BCA and with other uh, representatives of the industry. Um, and, um, you know, to get, to get out and about, like I said, you can go to any high street in Britain, and it is the, the British Bangladeshi-owned restaurant uh, is not just there, you know, making money for themselves, but they are the anchor of that high street. They are the place where, you know, they'll be the, often the only restaurant open late at night, which makes the high street a safe place to go. What is the future of this industry? We need to nurture this industry. We need to see this as a British industry. It's the backbone of Britain's high streets. Um, and we need to nurture and support Do it. you think the government realises that? Um, I don't think they do. And I think they need um, some... I'll be fair to the government. Some people in the government get this. Mm. Um, one or two, you know, uh, involved... I'm involved in politics, obviously, but um, I have friends on both sides, political of the political divide, Labour and Conservatives, and some of them do get it. I think mm. um, uh, my, my party certainly gets it, and we're helping mm. to ensure that they engage, but there's a few people that do get it. Um, we need to push further on that, because it is it's an absolutely crucial industry for Britain, not just for the Bangladeshi community, but for everybody. For, in for the country as the well. The country, it is the backbone. Because this like curry, said, British curry, is exported in other countries now, it, it including is. Indian subcontinent. It is, but if um, I'll tell you, if you go somewhere like... Um, uh, Grimsby, uh, or um, where, where uh, you know, I used to live in, in Bexley, if you take that Bangladeshi-owned restaurant out of the high street, the mm -hmm. high street will die. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's that restaurant keeping, it, keeping all the other businesses going. They keep the pubs going, they keep the, um, the minicab business going, um, and it makes it a safe place to go at, at night time. Mm -hmm. Because you know, there's activity and there's a nice place to go and get, get a good curry. Mm -hmm. Before we conclude, may I ask you to uh, say, uh, give a message to the community? I would say um, that um, my experience is that the community, the British Bangladeshi community is, is hugely ambitious. Um, they often uh, very supportive uh, of, uh, of other people from the community doing well, um, but sometimes a little bit inward looking. Um, you know, for example, in, in, in politics, I hear people say, oh, maybe, um, you know, if, if, we, uh, if we want to put ourselves forward, we must put ourselves forward in a place where there is a big Bangladeshi community. Um, my message would be uh, that the, uh, the skills, the expertise, um, the ambition of the community do you, do you think, unlimited. Do unlimited. you think we have enough politicians within Not the yet. politics? Not like yet. I'd like to see some conservative uh, uh, British Bangladeshi MPs. I think the Conservatives could do more to promote some of their people to, uh, to winnable seats. Um, I'd like to see 10 members of Parliament ten. of British ten Bangladeshi for now. origin. I'd like to see, we've got three women at the moment, they're all fantastic. And how about in the House of Lords? Um, we've, got, we've got one member of the House of Lords, I'd like to see some more people coming through, some business people perhaps with you know, different experience, not just mm. the political experience. Um, I'd like to see a token man for a start, um, we've got three great women, Roshnara Ali, Tulip Sadiq and, and Rupa, Rupa Huck, Huck, doing a fantastic job, all actually with, they've all been given jobs, they've all either front benches or they've give, been given a government role, uh, so they'll all be ministers, um, and that'd be great. But we want to see some more from other parties as well. Thank you so much for coming to the studio today, and it has been really informative, and it is a pleasure to talk to you, viewers. Today, we had another very special friend of Bangladesh's. He was, he's Howard Dover, and we have learned a lot. Thank you for watching. We'll be back soon.